Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Cars and Crosby. Well, Corvette's in the shop. We're starting our epic adventure, and we're gonna put our first set of stuff on the Corvette. If you guys are just following along for the first time, I bought a C7 Grand Sport, and I had a $10,000 Canadian budget to get it ready for one month away from the National Corvette Museum's Michelin NCM Bash. I'm really pumped and I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode starting right now. All right, stage one, aero, trim, intake, and protection products. You have uh, an investment and at the end of the day, you know, when you can take an investment and protect it, but also makes it look stylish and functional, I really always think that that is two birds with one stone. And with the Corvette and the partnership that I have with ACS Composites, I really do um, stand behind that whole credo and philosophy. I think that their products are, no offense to General Motors, superior in terms of durability and fitment. My technicians here, Phil and Todd, would have to agree that they fit on like a glove when we put them on our vehicles. And um, they also look great, but they're also functional. That's another thing that I really like about, you know, Corvette program in, in particular is all these vents are real. There's no fake vents on it. And the same goes for when I'm adding on protection products. You know, there's an aesthetic um, styling cue to it that I really enjoy. And uh, I'm, I'm over the moon if you guys haven't figured it out yet. I haven't worked on a C7 uh, that's mine in over uh, five years. I had a 2017 Z51 in Watkins Glen, gray manual transmission, obviously. And this is also gonna be very um, eclectic for me because the first thing that I did with my Corvette when I bought it is I took it on a pilgrimage down to the National Corvette Museum. I actually got my break-in oil change done at Bachman Chevrolet in St. Louis when Chevy Dude still worked there. So um, I didn't have a YouTube channel at that time. I'm kind of re-documenting a lot of the stuff. This is like riding a bike for me. All of these products, or at least for the most part, a lot of these products are stuff that I've already done on a previous C7. And it's just really um, kind of like a home, home uh, tour of a, of a rock band. You know, you're coming right back to your roots and I couldn't be more happy. So if you guys are just following along, we have a $7,500 budget on making this the Cars and Crosby touch of things that I think are necessary to have done to it. If you're looking at the prices of new vehicles and you're a little concerned and you're wanting to reinvest in the one that you have, as I say, love the one you got, then this is really gonna be a great episode because there's a lot of things that you can do to your Corvette that are cost effective, that can rekindle that kind of fire that you had with your C7 and making it that much better. And so. I know I'm a little spoiled that I just bought this and I'm already doing work on it, but I think it's uh, a fun little project to be able to work on this with a one month time frame between now and the 27th of April when I'm gonna be going down to Bowling Green for the Michelin Corvette Bash. So, we've got some boxes here. This is stage one. The uh, wheels are in the back over there. Uh, Phil's gonna be taking off the tires and we're gonna be taking off these wheels. Um, if you're not familiar with Grand Sports, those specific wheels had an issue with cracking. I'm a road tripper and I really don't want to have to be stuck into a situation where I have a cracked wheel and I have nothing to fix it. So I've gone uh, and taken the initiative on getting one of the GM accessory wheels that GM provides and ordered them. There's plenty of them. I think there was 250 sets in Pontiac, Michigan when we, left, when we looked. And why I'm doing this is because it's not the original set. Obviously, if I'm gonna spend that kind of money on a set of wheels, it'd be kind of crazy just to get the exact same thing, especially if there's known issues with them. And I'm all about trying to mitigate problems. So if I know that um, I've got a cracked wheel and it's a week before an epic road trip, that can absolutely Achilles heel the entire experience. And so if I can mitigate that kind of problem, almost like an insurance policy, that's to me a cost effective solution. So I know it's gonna be the lion's share of the amount of money that I'm spending, but you know, all it takes is one cracked wheel and you're out of business because you have to wait for a replacement wheel of the same spec in order to do it. And if that's the case, then I need to get an entire set at last minute in order to do it. I'd rather think in advance, 
get my original tires transferred over, which are only at 11,000 kilometers, so 8,000 miles, um, and then have those. They're a lot more of a durable wheel. They're actually a Z06 wheel, and they say Z06 on it, which I didn't realize. I used the VIN to, to look at what uh, GM OEM wheels would fit. These said that they would. They said they were Z06 style. I'm gonna be able to live with the fact that it says Z06 on it, especially if it means that I've got uninterrupted road trips in the future. We've got a cold air intake system in there with that Jake logo box. And then over here, we have our very good friends from Montreal, ACS Composites, who have given me a package of stuff that I've ordered um, of all the things that I think are essential to making your vehicle not only look stylish, but protecting it. So this is an investment that, in my opinion, will pay off in dividends. And that's another thing that I want to note. You know, I'm not just trying to take a big 55 gallon drum uh, and throw $10,000 in it. A lot of the things that I'm going to be investing in, I think will be cost effective when I eventually go to sell this, whether it be in a decade from now or in a year from now, who knows? So one of the biggest things that I'm always looking at when I'm making a purchase on a vehicle is what the, is going to translate to on resale. All right, we're getting right into it. Phil is working on the first aesthetic modification. I say it's aesthetic. I guess technically it is some air downforce performance, but um, I don't really know how much of that is going to benefit me. In here is a wicker bill or winglet for uh, a wide body spoiler. This is the level one arrow kit that comes from the factory. And I just want to note that while Phil's taking off the two-sided tape, Joseph from ACS Composite is above and beyond in everything that he does. He does a design session if you're looking at doing quite a bit of work with him. And um, through that design session, there was a couple of things that I ended up changing. And I trust this guy. I've known him for over six years now. And um, there's things that he did that went out of his way to kind of help me out in being cost effective. For example, I originally was going to get the 07 rocker panels from him, but he's like, you know what? The stage one arrow kit that's on here, it's actually not as bad as you think in terms of aesthetics. You're still going to get the same look. You're going to drop more money than you need to. And you can invest that into some things that I've always commented on that I wanted to change. And that is the side spats. So over there, there's pitted plastic and ECS has come out with a very beautiful finished version of what the side spats should look like. I'll unbox that when I um, get to it, but I gotta be Phil's co-pilot here and help him out in taking these stage one winglets off and putting these stage two more raised ones. There's, there's three different versions. This I believe is the two inch version. There is a two and a half inch version as well. And as you can see, one of the things that I like most about ACS composites is the finish. That is exactly how it should be done from the factory. That's carbon flash metallic. And it's gonna look like this is just, you know, a regular GM part when you put it on here, but he's gone above and beyond and always making sure that it's gonna fit and uh, adhere a lot easier. So the technicians that work on the ACS composite stuff, or if you're gonna do it yourself, will be pleasantly surprised with how well this stuff works. All right, they're off. And as you can see, we have a lot of residual adhesive that's on here. Phil is uh, applying, what, what is this called again, Phil? It's pretty clean, oh, it's just a, a mild chemical that eats through the, the two-way tape and the adhesive residue that leaves no trace and it's to clean. Very nice. So it's working for us on getting this off instead of me meticulously going through here and getting it all off myself. Obviously so that we can have a clean surface to apply the next ones on here. All right, cold air intake. This is probably one of the easiest mods if you're looking for performance upgrades. You want to make sure that you do it from the factory now because one of the issues that comes about with uh, vehicles that have especially mag ride which you can tell right away with this being a grand sport it's a standard option there's a lot of telemetry and electronics that are hooked up like look at this even just to the engine you can see already there's a lot of sensors that are monitoring how much oxygen is going into the actual uh, LT1 in here and if you're gonna do a GM accessory uh, cold air intake system the uh, system will be notified that there is an increase in air because if you don't do that it'll actually stifle the amount of flow that goes in there because it doesn't understand why it's getting more oxygen. So um, just like when you buy an Apple product, you should probably use Apple accessories. When you're buying a Corvette, you should probably use GM accessories because it's gonna assist you in multiple ways down the road. Yeah. 
So Phil just removed the mass airflow sensor from here. And now we got our first look at the new one, which he's putting in here. Um, another indirect kind of blessing, I guess, that um, I'm doing this with it being now four years old is uh, if the intake system had a dirty filter in there and let's say the cabin filter was also dirty, this is a great time to do it. Uh, in terms of knowing if your cabin filter needs to be changed, if you obviously smell something like mildew and stuff, that's some buildup of some leaves and foliage and organic matter that's in there. But you also might notice that the flow of your air is reduced. And that's also another telltale sign that you need to come in and get your cabin filter change, which is in the very top here. It's a, it's a, it's a little bit of an extensive job to do. So another blessing in disguise is if you're already doing trim stuff and you already got your Corvette on a hoist at a dealership, why not do a vehicle health check? So today we've also got a vehicle health check being done on this Corvette just to kind of give it a check up from the neck up and making sure that everything else is good while we're already doing work on it. All right, washers and grommets are off of the original intake system so that we can apply them to the new one over here. Does it feel any lighter, Phil? It doesn't feel any lighter. <laughs> Like but it's red and red means it's fast. All right, Phil's got the air box fitting like a glove, making sure that we got a tight seal on the side there and we're gonna fasten in those 10 mils right over there and uh, on to the next one. That was fast. So what were you just saying? Well, this last one I put of these uh, air boxes it's really tight to get in, so you know there's a good seal there. Oh, okay, cool. So just so you guys are aware, when you're drilling into the actual, or you're screwing back in with the 10 mils, uh, don't be surprised if it has a lot more resistance than on the way in. Chevy performance badge, here we go. Drop it in place. Nice, now you know it goes faster. All right, while we did that intake, take a look at this. It's just falling off. Looks like a brisket after 12 hours. Okay, you just wipe it off. Microfiber rag, whatever sticks on. Just add some more, sit and wait. Nicely done. All right, winglet number one. A nice, clean, and prepped surface. Adhesives go in. T15s with the original Loctite still good, eh? Oh, Phil's just marking uh, which side this came off of so that uh, we can rotate them around and spread the wear evenly. So wheels are off and it looks like we can just take off the trim pieces here to get the side spats off without having to take the front bumper, which is a obvious sigh of relief in terms of labor costs and getting everything fitted properly. And then we're taking off the stage one arrow kit here. Um, this will just be garbage. Um, it's just the pitted plastic. And then we're going to put the scrape guards on underneath. So we got our magnetic ride control system, which is right here. We've got our nice six piston calipers on here. I'm very excited to have uh, slotted rotors again. I haven't had that in a long time. And um, honestly, there's not any major wear and tear on here, so we're not even going to really need to worry about doing a brake service as of right now. Um, but we will continue to look over the vehicle to make sure it has a vehicle health check because in a few weeks from now, um, we'll have the long road trip to Bowling Green, which is about 2,000 kilometers 
and you got to make sure that you have a vehicle prep before a long road trip that long. So 1500 kilometer road trip or, or sorry, 1500 mile road trip. You're going to want to get that done. All right. Taking off, which should have never been on the Corvette to begin with. I don't like to dig on GM very often, but this is one that really got me. You got a beautiful $100,000 car, and then we put pitted plastic on it on the outside of all places. This is where this is going, right in there. Splash cards are off. Again, we can recycle these, I guess. All right, and here we go. The spats are going in. Little tabs there are perfectly sitting out so that you can just pull them and have the adhesive go right on. All right, stage one arrow coming out. We just got to drill out the rivets. Quite easy to do. And that's how you drill out a rivet. All right, stage one splitter from pitted plastic, RIP. Phil just prepped these, making sure that he got the backside of the rivets out, cleaned the surface a little bit just so that we have a nice clean contact. These little fascia guards here to direct the air around the tires, they stay on. We're gonna lower it back down and get the spats put on the vehicle. Okay, see these nice little uh, two-way tape tabs that we have here, clicks into place, very satisfyingly pulls that off. He prepped the surface with some alcohol before he uh, put the spats in and already she's starting to look way, way better. There we go. Kind of matches perfectly up with the side spat extensions. A love tap from Phil. And we have some splash guards. Actually, ACS rock guards, I forgot. These are the rock guards, so they go out a little bit more. And you also have added coverage that goes all the way through the side here, which is great because what you don't normally realize is that when you turn your wheel, that's really where a lot of the water and stuff gets kicked up because the wheel obviously has its tread exposed. So with having these be a lot more prominent and also having that beautiful finish instead of the pitted plastic, it looks good and it's functional. Okay, had a little bit of a delivery. And in that time, Phil, has put together the sets of tires and wheels that are going on the vet. What is that? Oh, that's nothing. All right, so unfortunately the scrape armor is not going on. Um, there's some things that I still wanna to do to this, but we'll get it off the hoist before we go over those things and uh, go over the final details. All right, our first look at the wheels Phil is putting on. One ounce, that's not bad. So these are a brand new set, so the barrel's nice and clean. We didn't really have to prep these that much. Obviously right now we've got tire season coming about, so lots of people getting their wheels taken care of. Phil, uh, this had 11,000 kilometers on it. What do you think of when you see these tires? Anything in particular that you would note after uh, 11,000 kilometers of use? Uh, just a little bit of feathering, so just like rotate the side. So we're gonna rotate these from left to right, obviously, because this is a larger wheel in the back than the front. So you can only go left to right and halfway through its life cycle, which is a roughly around 20,000 kilometers, uh, is when you get it done. And look at that, Phil has perfectly balanced that tire and that is the last one. Off it comes and onto the Corvette it will go. Uh, Phil, when you're uh, putting these wheels on, uh, do you suggest driving it for a bit and then retorquing them or what's the protocol for yeah, these? So retorque your wheels, especially if you're going to go on a long road trip after you're getting your new tires done. Always an uh, important thing to do. So center caps are nice and black. Phil is going to be an incredible Hulk if he can take both of those and carry them. Or he's going to be creative like that and get these nice wide, wide body uh, tires in the back here. So let's go see what they look like. All right, our first look at the Z06. It says Z06 right here, but you can't even see it unless I showed it to you. Now there is a machined edge on here. And as you can see with the bright red calipers, the side marker reflectors and the rear taillights that the tertiary color on this Corvette is red. I have seen tastefully folks that have put piping 
in red along the edges of their front splitter and side rockers. And also a healthy suggestion from another Grand Sport owner, Lino, uh, on maybe doing some pinstriping on the wheels. And I, I think he's onto something. So I think as a little side project, a little finishing touch that we'll do on this is the red piping to go with the Grand Sport emblem, which if you guys are uh, not familiar with, let's just give you a quick reference on that. So we've got red on the Grand Sport, red on the calipers, red on the twin flags, red over here. You can see the common theme of red. And almost like this, I wanna put this kind of style. I've seen it done tastefully on a couple of vehicles where you do a kind of like a pinstriping to accentuate it on there. And then we'll do a pinstriping on here. So please comment, let me know what you guys think. And then another little aesthetic upgrade that we wanna do is these 3M um, guards. They went with a newer version on the C8 Corvette, but the C7 versions oxidized and UV light and they turned yellow. So we wanna get those fixed up as well. I feel like actually having said all this that I might have to make a trip down to Auto Trim Design to do this. Uh, Cause I wanna get those done properly as well. All right, everybody, we're done for now. Who knows what's gonna happen next? I need your help in, in figuring out what we're gonna do next. Uh, we have a $10,000 budget, 7,500 American. And uh, well, let me introduce you to what we have right now. Let me introduce you to, well, actually she doesn't have a name yet. She's stormtrooper -y. She's a stick shift grand sport. She's a C7 old school cool. <sighs> Whoever can name this Corvette will get a gift. I just got a fresh uh, bunch of stuff. I was gonna go over the vehicle, but I've already got sidetracked. Under the T's is where you get in. Uh, this is just an example of some of the stuff. I got these beautiful Corvette duffel bags that just came in that I should have unwrapped before I went on camera. But these nice Corvette duffel bags, they're waterproof as it says right here. I got some Corvette golf shirts. This is just stuff I was gonna take home for me. And then I've also got some stuff to go down to uh, the Corvette, I guess we're supposed to call it the Michelin Bash. Um, there's the original car intake and the scrape. I don't know what we're going to do with this scrape guard kit. If someone wants it, I'll sell it to them for whatever I bought it for. Less $100 because I unwrapped it. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with these either, but they'll go into the basement. Um, anyways, whoever names my Corvette gets a gift. One of those three things that you want in there. Uh, and then I also got some really cool hats but uh, I'm not gonna unwrap it because I already got tons of hats right now. She needs a name. She's stormtrooper -y. She's a manual transmission. She's got uh, a purist kind of look right now. Let's go through what we've got. So we have the stage two deflectors on the ACS composite front splitter, which is a tried and true cost-effective way of making it look aggressive and um, I guess unofficially is a scrape guard in a way on the underside. I was hoping to put the scrape guard on, but no dice. This is my favorite tasteful upgrade. The side spats now have a beautiful carbon flash metallic finish. We already talked about why we did the wheels. The debate here is if we're going to be doing a red pinstripe to match the tertiary color of red on here. Uh, I need to get some valve stem caps, which is easy to do. We kept the original rocker panels and we have a nice protection from the side spat going down here with the rock guards which i absolutely love which will keep this side nice and clean we still need to get these done which is um within the budget and then we were also cost effective thanks to joseph and getting the stage two winglets and him suggesting to just leave the stage ones on there so thank you to joseph for that um all right if you add up everything as of right now i spent twenty six hundred dollars at ACS Composites. I spent about four or $500 in labor. I spent about $3,600 on the set of wheels, $1,000 on the cold air intake with install. I am officially adding it all up, not in my head, I actually did the math. I'm at 80, 8,456 right now in terms of my net in. So I have $1,500 to spare Canadian. That's just enough money to go slightly over my budget and get a catback exhaust from AWE. It's enough money to PPF the vehicle. And I was also thinking it would be kind of cool to replicate what I've done on my, my C8 coupe uh, and maybe try to wrap this back part to kind of keep with that theme of having a black top. 
Also with it having a stinger stripe, there might be something to do there with the decals if you were to do a budget. I also would really like to see if I could take out the scoops and paint them black. Um, Labor-wise, it's not a lot of work. All you need to do is just take out the T15s here and then the T15s here, pop the fender out, and then you can paint this. So that's another thing that we could do with the money. Um, I, I really want to respect the fact that uh, I'm trying to do this on a budget. Uh, I know that's a, a lot of money, but keep in mind that guys, this is technically an investment in terms of you trying to translate a lot of this money into resale. So I don't see it as a big 55 gallon drum that I'm just burning the money in. Uh, I do see a lot of logic in the stuff that we put in there that build value for the next owner, uh, whenever that might be. I want some suggestions. And uh, if you're gonna be at the bash, um, and one of your suggestions was in it, then uh, I have some swag. I'm gonna load this puppy up with a bunch of stuff. And um, yeah, I've got a fresh new batch of Cars and Crosby beer. And then I've also got for non-beer drinkers, a whiskey iced tea that I have coming up. So I'm just gonna be true to my Canadian heritage and bringing alcohol over the border. Uh, <laughs> don't drink and drive. It says it right on the can. Uh, but I think that that is a, is a really fun thing. It's part of our heritage to bring booze over the border to you Yanks. And I'm going to do that and bring it down to Kentucky. So um, make sure you say hi to me when you're down there. Make sure you give me your feedback on what we should do on the No Name Project as of right now. Because there's a lot of things that I'm going to load this up with that I want to give away to you guys. To thank you for watching. Because I feel like by the time uh, the time I get down to, to uh, Bowling Green and I'll be at 10,000 followers, which I'm kind of humbled by. And I feel like it's, it's about time that I give you guys uh, a token of my appreciation for that. Cause there's a lot of people out there that have consistently watched my channel and you've become part of my family. And I really appreciate you guys for that. So stay tuned for an update on this. That's all for now. I'm Morgan Crosby and happy motoring.